All right. I'm going to try to show how to uh, time a single Rotax engine from the late 60s, early 70s. This is a little rig I built. I usually start my engines on this base, which I screw down to the wooden floor so they won't move around too much. And I want to do it with the uh, cylinder head off. I find it's a little more accurate. I had these adapters that I used to try to put the dowel gauge through the plug hole. Uh, these kept hitting into the fins of the head and this one was the wrong size and it was getting a little bit frustrating. So I decided that I was just going to do a direct method on top of the crown of the piston with my dial gauge. So this is a little, a little setup, very simple. Just a piece of plywood kind of uh, screwed onto the base here. Piece of metal here to hold a magnetic base on. It's just, a, it's just an extender, that's all it is. And then I can just drop my dial gauge on the crown of the piston like so. And I can have a good and accurate reading. Now inside the magneto here you can see the lever. Okay, it moves. Okay, and you can see this little nib here. Okay, the cam falls into this this thing right here. Okay, and when the adva when the, the motor spins, the centrifugal force opens this up and this advances or retards the cam, as you know, in relation to the speed that the engine is going. Okay, so when we do our timing, we want to do it in the advance mode. That's why we have to bring this open, like so. When we take our timing readings, that's where we want this lever to be. Okay, the cam lobe is connected to the magneto, and the magneto is connected to the crankshaft with a Woodruff key. So it's all on a one to one relation. Okay, there is no difference between where the crank is and where the, the magneto is and where the cam is. They all work together. The only variable that there is in the system is the stator plate. You can change the stator plate clockwise or counterclockwise and this changes the timing because the cam will always be, the cam lobe will always open the points at the same place in the engine rotation. If you change the stator plate, you effectively change when that happens. So you change the relation between the relationship between the stator plate and the cam lobe. That's what we're doing when we're timing an engine. Okay. And we'll be reading this uh, on this dial gauge here. Now the manual, the service manual, uh, gives us a specification for this engine. We are going to measure where top dead center is. So let's do that right now. So right now, if I want to measure top dead center, I can turn the crank here and you can see on the dial gauge, it's right about there. Uh, 150 to 170 thousandths before top dead center. Okay, That's the specification we're looking for. So for this to happen, I need to put the mag back on here and set up a, a way to uh, determine uh, when, it, when that happens. Like I can go 150 or 170 on the dial gauge here, but what tells me if the points are opening or closing at the exact moment? Well, for that to happen, uh, some people use a little timing light, some people use a little timing buzzer. Uh, I've rigged up a little thing here which uh, uses both. Here's uh, my 6 volt light, my 6 volt uh, DC buzzer, a battery, and a ground. So, the only thing I need to do with this is connect the negative to uh, the ground, like so, and then connect the positive, and these, these two, the buzzer and the light, are in parallel so that it happens both at the same time. And connect it to the black wire. So we can hear the buzzer and you can see the light. Now, if 
I change the cam position, you hear the difference in the buzzer and you see the difference in the light. Just right where you see it here, that's where the points are opening, okay? So, what I want to do now is I want to put the magneto on there so that the, the relationship between the crank, the cam, and the magneto is all the same, okay? And then I'm going to see where my, my uh, points are opening. So let's do this right now. There. It is in here. Now, now we can see right here, okay, if we push this, okay, we can see the lever here. We can see that the cam is connected to the centrifugal lever, the advanced lever, okay? So we want to push this down. That is the advanced position, okay? So, let us go, that is 100 thousandths, that is 150, okay? That is approximately where we need the points to open, between 150 and 20 more would bring us to 170. In this area, that's where we want our points to open up, okay? So I will reconnect my buzzer system. If I take a look at the difference in the sound, it's happening at about 145 uh, thousandths before top dead center. So we're not quite where we need to be. So what do we need to do to make this happen? Well, we need to change the stator plate, where the stator plate is in relation to the magneto. So, we need to take the magneto off again. I might be able to take it off by hand. Yeah. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the three screws here and move the stator plate just a little bit. Now this can be done through the magneto holes, but I find it very hard to do with the magneto on. I'd rather do it with the magneto off. Obviously this rig is no good to anybody if the engine is not disassembled and uh, in the machine okay basically I do all my timing when I'm rebuilding them and this is the rig I'm using here but the the, the theory or the method here is applicable. you can adapt this method uh, to a motor that's inside the sled so just while I'm here I didn't talk about points gap so the, the manual says the points gap should be uh, 0.014 to uh, 0.018. So I've took, taken my feeler gauge here, 0 0.016, and I'll check the points. Are they open? And I can just feel the very slightest bit of drag. So that means my points are well adjusted. 
If you need to adjust them, this is the screw that you need to uh, untighten, adjust them, retighten, and check with the feeler gauge again. Okay? That's all we'll say about that. So, we need to move the stator plate. So now, this is where I was when I started. This is where I was on the first attempt. So, let's move it here. And tighten that down. And see where this will bring us. As you can see, it's a little bit of trial and error. So we start at the top dead center and go back. 100. 153. So 153 is within the specifications in the service manual, which is 150 to 170. So this engine is uh, well-timed and ready to go.